Over a century ago, a German architect dreamt up what might be the wildest idea ever. He planned to drain the sea. Imagine trying to empty the ocean. This idea was more ambitious than any big engineering project before it. But why did he want to do this? And could such a crazy plan have actually worked? Let's get right into this bit of history to get the full picture. But before we start, make sure to subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more fascinating videos. Back in the 1800s, there was a popular concept in Europe, particularly in Germany, called Lebensraum, or living space. The idea was straightforward. As a country's population grows, its people need more space to live. In the 1920s, this concept caught Adolf Hitler's attention and significantly influenced his views. Across Europe, populations were booming and countries were running out of space. Plus, there were more concerns about energy. As more people populated the Earth, the need for energy surged, making resources like coal and oil increasingly crucial. It seemed inevitable that European nations might end up fighting for these essential resources and space. However, in the 1920s, a German named Hermann Sergel looked at this challenge from a completely different angle. He introduced an idea that was nothing short of mind-blowing. Atlantropa. Atlantropa blended the words Atlantic and Europa, echoing the allure of the legendary sunken city of Atlantis. The concept of Atlantropa was as fantastical as the story of Atlantis itself, and Sergel's vision was to drain the Mediterranean Sea. His idea was to turn the Mediterranean into land, creating new space for Europeans to live and averting potential wars over territory. Remember that the Mediterranean is about eight times the size of Germany. Sergel saw vast areas, now underwater, becoming fertile lands filled with towns and cities, places where people could thrive without the fear of overcrowding. Moreover, removing the Mediterranean would make travel to Africa much easier, opening up even more space for European expansion, allowing for the construction of new communities and opportunities in Africa. Sergel's idea was sparked by an actual event in Earth's geological history. Rewind about 5 million years and you'd find a different scenario. Back then, tectonic plate movements sealed off the Strait of Gibraltar, cutting off the Mediterranean from the Atlantic. With no fresh water coming in, the Mediterranean began to shrink, exposing vast tracts of land. Eventually, the strait reopened, allowing Atlantic waters to flood back in, refilling the Mediterranean and submerging that newly exposed land once again. For a brief time, Europe had significantly more land. Sergel was fascinated by this natural event and wanted to engineer a similar change. He wasn't going to sit around waiting for tectonic plates to move again. His plan was to use human ingenuity to mimic this natural process. Then came the core of Sergel's daring scheme, a gigantic dam across the Strait of Gibraltar. This man-made barrier would stand in for the natural land bridge that once cut off the Mediterranean, aiming to replicate the sea's ancient shrinkage through engineering rather than natural geological processes. Constructing a dam across the Strait of Gibraltar was a monumental task. The strait's depth reaches up to 900 meters in some places, and even in shallower parts, it's about 300 meters deep. Up until then, no one had built a dam that tall, and even now, only a few exceed that height, like China's Jinping-1 and Nurek dams. Besides the depth, the width of the strait posed another massive challenge. At its narrowest, the Strait of Gibraltar is 13 kilometers wide. To give you an idea, the Jinping-1 and Nurek Dam span only 600 meters and 700 meters respectively. So, Sergel's dam wouldn't just have to be taller than any existing dam, it would also need to stretch over a distance 20 times longer than those structures. But Atlantropa's ambition didn't stop at the Strait of Gibraltar. Sergel also planned to dam the Dardanelles Strait to cut off the Mediterranean from the Black Sea. Although this task was somewhat less daunting than the Gibraltar Dam, it would still need to span over a kilometre. 
Together, these massive dams would isolate the Mediterranean, allowing its water level to decrease. Then there was yet another part of Sogol's plan, a dam between Sicily and Tunisia, dividing the Mediterranean in two. The dam between Sicily and Tunisia was a giant leap even beyond Sogol's previous proposals, spanning over 150 kilometers. Sogol's strategy was to use this dam to create different water levels in the Mediterranean's two halves, dropping the western part by 100 meters and the eastern part by 200 meters. Sogol's calculations determined that these specific water level reductions were optimal for land reclamation in each area. By doing so, he anticipated uncovering around 700,000 square kilometers of new land, an area twice the size of Germany, which would dramatically address Europe's need for more space. There was an additional layer to Sogol's vision. He recognized that Europe's growing population would increase the demand for energy. Sogol's plan aimed to transform the Mediterranean into a massive source of hydroelectric power essentially turning the sea into a huge, water-powered energy source. Despite the plan's extreme ambition, it gained some traction during Sogol's time. He wrote books, leaflets and articles about Atlantropa, sparking interest and excitement among the public, who saw it as a peaceful way to address overpopulation concerns. Some politicians were even swayed by the idea considering investment in Atlantropa a better use of funds than engaging in warfare. The engineering community began to riff on Sergal's concepts, suggesting a network of dams across the Strait of Gibraltar rather than a single massive one. These step-like dams would reduce the pressure on any single structure, distributing the Atlantic's force more evenly and lowering the risk of catastrophic failure. This refined plan, though still incredibly bold, seemed a bit more feasible to some. Buoyed by the success of contemporary projects like the Zuida Zee Works in the Netherlands, which demonstrated the potential of large-scale land reclamation and water management endeavors. Sogol's vision expanded further. He imagined a unified Europe connected by a central power grid, proposing a peaceful strategy to prevent wars. If a country became aggressive, others could simply cut off its power supply to enforce peace. Sergal also thought about the consequences of lowering the Mediterranean sea level. Cities like Venice and Cairo, dependent on sea access, would be landlocked. And his solution was a series of canals in Italy and Egypt to maintain their maritime connections despite the receding sea. Sergal extended his vision to create a supercontinent he called Eurafrica. He proposed another dam on the Congo River to form a vast inland freshwater sea, which could then transform the Sahara into fertile farmland, beneficial for Europe. Certainly, Sergal's Atlantropa proposals weren't universally admired. Looking back, they echo the era's colonialist mindset, largely ignoring the rights and desires of Africa's inhabitants, who likely had no interest in a European influx claiming their land. While Sergal aimed to prevent conflict in Europe, he appeared indifferent to the potential upheaval for Africans. Beyond the ethical concerns, practical and safety issues also plagued Atlantropa. Critics wondered about the disaster potential. What if an earthquake or an act of sabotage breached one of the massive dams? Such a catastrophe could unleash the Atlantic back into the Mediterranean, destroying the newly established settlements. Then there's the financial aspect. While exact costs are hard to pin down, Atlantropa's price tag would have been astronomical, dwarfing the already substantial billion-dollar cost of the Zuida Zee Works, a much smaller project. Funding Atlantropa would require an unprecedented financial union among European nations, a level of cooperation that seemed far-fetched before the European Union's era. Despite dedicating his life to promoting Atlantropa, Sergal never saw his ideas realized. His era was marked by the rise of Hitler and the Nazi Party, who sought Lebensraum through more sinister means, leading to World War II. Tragically, Sergal died in a car accident. So what's your take on this? Do you think Sergal's Atlantropa was a feasible vision? And is it possible to undertake such a colossal engineering endeavor today?
Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos.